Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards, and I hope this video finds everyone well today. We are going to be taking a look at a keyboard that since I saw it, I was like, wow, and I honestly expected it to be much pricier than it is. Now I know that this keyboard goes by different brands and is available from AliExpress and other places, but I guess because I'm more familiar with this brand and am in constant communication with them and worked with them on giveaways and everything I I tend to trust them more and the price difference from what I've seen is minimal so I'm not sure of the other names this goes by but the one that we're taking a look at today is the Warmere S-K71 I keep wanting to say that wrong but sure why they just didn't stick with SK71 or K71, but that's neither here nor there. This is a really nice looking keyboard and it only goes to fortify statements I made last year and at the beginning of this year that we're going to see a big change in what's available for in-stock keyboards and it just continues to come true. From the GMK67 to the Leo Bog i75 to, well, I could go on. A lot of the keyboards before this year, a lot of the keyboards I took a look at, especially pre built every once in a while, I would come across one that sounded pretty good for stock. Still needed some work, but it sounded pretty good. For the majority, they sounded like a stock pre built keyboard. This year, though, that has completely flipped on its head. I rarely come across a keyboard that doesn't sound good stock. The majority of these pre-built and even some of the bare bones, wow, they're just, wow. I mean, the Leo Bog High 75. Yes, I know it uses foam. And I don't know, some people say, oh, that's too much foam. Now, if it the keyboard still feels good and still sounds good, why is it too much foam? I mean, they, they almost, I don't know if it, it, I get the impression that they're saying, oh, it's got too much foam in it. So it's like cheating on the sound. But I mean, I, I don't see that as cheating. We're all just, you know, doing what we can. I mean, I, I, I've recently started using pet plastic and I'm still working on that video. I'm applying it to several keyboards, uh, but I've released a couple of sound tests before and after and there's a pretty significant change just from that, but I don't see why using foams or different materials would be a, a cheat. If it works, if it fits and you like it, I think it's a good. But today, this keyboard that we're taking a look at, this is sub $100. I think it actually is $89.99, and I'll, I'll be sure to correct that in the technical section. I'm just remembering off the top of my head. But... This is something that even last year would have been a group buy keyboard that would have been a couple hundred dollars or more, in my opinion. We are taking a look at the Warmier SK71. It is a, technically I guess it's a 68% because of the way the keys are laid out, um, but it has a six key cluster for navigation as well as um, the expanded arrow cluster. So look, and it also also is three mode and includes a 2.4 gigahertz receiver. This is um Shaco colorway, I believe. They are double shot. I'm not sure if they're PBT or not, but I'm sure we'll find out. We also have a user manual telling us all the uh, shortcut keys, hardware requirements, what the switches on the back are. Oh. And there's a little surprise. But let's see what else we've got in the box before we dive into the keyboard. All right, we have, I guess when this is a, like a silica gel pack, but it's just in a pad. Yep, do not eat. It's not a mint. Man, I was gonna eat it. All right, so opening up the accessories box. Let's see what we've got in here. We have a nice rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable. Uh, with caps on it. 
as well as a Velcro strap. And we have a keycap key switch puller. But one of the things that I like that I see, this is an aluminum keyboard, but look what we have. We have a pocket for our 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now, my only complaint is why couldn't they have silk screened warmer on there? At least I can know. Now, granted, I think this is the only gray 2.4 gigahertz dongle that I have, but it still would be nice to know because if that happens to fall out, although it's it's in there pretty good, pretty sure it's got a magnet holding it in, but. I always hear, well, it's an aluminum kit. How can you put a pocket for the 2.4? I mean, and how can you put a switch on an aluminum kit? I mean, I have keyboards that you have to lift off a key to switch wireless because it's aluminum. This is cheaper than a lot of keyboards. And it has a lot of the things they said they, you couldn't get on way more expensive keyboard so let's go ahead and take this nice little dust cover off it's very well packed all right wow this is one solid hunk of steel i like the uh design the lines now we do have also side light yeah that is definitely very interesting the um the aluminum has a texture it's not cold most aluminum kits are really cold i mean it's cooler but it's not like ice cold and we just oh, i mean the shaco colorway really works with this blue uh this is actually i think the third or fourth sky blue keyboard i got and i'm really growing fond of this and it looks good with a lot of colors even with red you wouldn't think so but well i think anyway but my wife is the one with all the design um, powers. I think I'm pretty good at design, but I know what I like. That's about it. All right, so real quick, I want to see what switches we've got in here. Oh, all right. So these are, these are the Otemu Whites. They are stock, but it's just the slightest amount of ping. But they could use a little uh, lubrication. Now, taking a look at the keyboard, we have what sounds like a PC plate. We have an IXPE sheet. Oh, and we also have PET film. <laughs> Speaking of, that's the mod that I've been using and I've been turning some keyboards into amazing sounding keyboards just with that sheet of PET. So a lot of keyboard manufacturers are adding it because they found that it works and it does. Um, I can't see any foam below the PCB, but it definitely has plate PCB padding or dampening. It appears that the plate is clear. We also have south-facing LEDs, which a lot of people are going to appreciate, despite north-facing interference really not being that much of an issue anymore, especially with the newer switches. That nice, crunchy, poppy, creamy sound. Like music to my ears. And this is one thing I really appreciate with 65% um, when they can do this full-size right shift. All right, I'm done. End game. Bye. <laughs> Just kidding. This is really nice. I, I was pretty sure I was going to like this. Um, now I'm very sure. And we've got insert, we've got delete, page up, page down, home and end. That's kind of, I would lay it out differently. I'll have to take a look at the software. If this came with QMKY out of the box, that would be it. This would be my 65 or 68% end game. I love this layout. 
it has plenty of keys i love that it has a full size right shift i don't really mind the one use on the right side for the mods the function key is where i expect it to be it's uh yeah this is a quite a nice keyboard let's take a look at these stabilizers First, let's see how well they're attached. They have the slightest amount of wiggle, but hardly any to speak of. More on that side than this side, but a lot of times I found that it's actually not really the stabilizer wiggling, it's just because the plate, if you're using it, they're using a PC plate, is softer, so it has a little bit more give. But it's really, I don't think this is an issue, especially hearing how they sound. All right, we definitely have <laughs> some lubrication on there. Maybe a bit too much. And these are one of these newer stabs. I've been seeing these with this. Um, they don't have feet, but they have this uh, just like a, a bar down at the bottom. I don't know if that's used as damping or not because it's not like it's soft. But the ones I've seen that are like this, the solid color with that little, it's almost like a little T right there seem to sound very nice stock now obviously you can see that some of the uh <laughs> the uh lubrication has gotten onto the pcb and unfortunately we do not have holes for screwing stabilizers which i didn't expect but it's gotten to the point that plate mounted stabilizers have gotten really good so it's not as disappointing as it used to be because a lot of times you won't even notice the difference. And it definitely appears to be a cherry profile. Like I said, these are double shot. And the, yeah, these are definitely cherry. One point four, not that bad. It's at least above the one. <laughs> if they're less than one, it's like, eh, are you a key cap? Or you're just a piece of plastic. Well, I guess they're both a piece of plastic, but are you more of a key cap? You gotta be thicker than one millimeter thickness for myself anyway. Anything less than a millimeter, it's they're they're way too weak. Like you could literally crush them with your fingers most of the time. And they just have a very hollow plasticky sound, even if the keyboard sounds good. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn this on and see what it looks like. Bam. And we also have our side light. I, I gotta say, I am a sucker for side lighting. Uh, I really am. So obviously it's trying to connect, but we're not gonna do... My, my laptop is... My video workstation is overloaded on its USB port. So, <laughs> um, so it seems to, if I understand it, it appears to have... Um, tap so that you can double tap and then hit that for the function equivalent it appears at. all right so this is light mode and function delete to change light colors i think i have to get it on a solid I like that. That's giving us the battery percentage, so it looks like we're at 80 something percent. I don't have to do the R, just the function, alt and function. That's nice. So it's a 71 key, 68 percent, as I said. Um, and it does come in quite a few colorways. Some very nice ones, actually. Purple is coming soon, um, next week, September 25th, oh, about 11 days. There's this blue black silver and metallic red Ooh, that red is sharp looking and then you can add a random keycap set for ten dollars huh. set worth more than 25.99 and i for the most part like warmier xvx keycaps it is cnc a cnc aluminum 
68% of south-facing RGBs, Zingmen V2 stabilizers, 3 and 5 pin hot swap, Ooh, leaf spring gasket mount. Now that's going to make me want to get in there sooner rather than later to see about that. Oh, and we also have a QC sticker. Always got to appreciate those. Oh, that's over a screw hole. But it's a nice indicator that a human being has actually taken a look at this and ensured that it works prior to it being shipped out. I cannot cannot stress enough how how important QA and QC is for any product, software, hardware, whatever it is. Having proper quality assurance and quality control is key to keeping your customers happy and making sure that you deliver things that work most of the time. I mean, obviously there's going to be issues in shipping and things that, you know, they can't check or it gets shot or whatever that could happen. So there's still going to be you know, a certain amount of breakage, but when there's a QAQC person, that percentage goes down significantly. Honestly, I cannot think of another keyboard that has this set of features that's this price. I mean, we do have some other 75%, um, but this is a three mode, so even the 75% are gonna be shooting up at this price. It has the full aluminum body, it's CNC'd, uh, it is three mode, it is leaf spring, it has five layers of foam, it has double shot keycaps, TTC hot swap sockets. I think I've heard that they're actually least, less likely than the kale to pop off, but I, I haven't proven that and I don't really want to go around starting to push out sockets and perhaps lose a trace. It has a side lighting, 4600 milliamp hour battery. And plenty of RGB effects. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, I gotta do this. I gotta do this real quick. All right, so I want to make a little comparison. I, I, I don't really like bringing in other keyboards when I'm reviewing, but I gotta make a comparison here. This is a keyboard. I'm not gonna say which one, but if you guys have been watching my channel, I'm sure you'll recognize it. I still have the same keycaps that I bought specifically for this set. This keyboard came out last year on a group buy, 65%, $399. And don't get me wrong, it has some nice accents. It's not bad. So we have north facing, we do have a carbon fiber plate, but in order to turn on the wireless mode, you have to pull off the control and turn it on. This is just what I wanted to use as a comparison that we have gasket mount over here leaf spring this is just a regular gasket mount but this came out almost exactly a year ago i'm going to say september october of last year 399 dollars on a group buy north facing three mode um no pocket for the the 2.4 and that's slightly heavier but not by much weird layout and it's not qmk by i mean at that price you know, you'd kind of expect it to be open source nope so a year ago this was 399 dollars. today a better keyboard i would say substantially i mean it doesn't have a carbon fiber plate but it has a pc plate has a better layout has a more sensible location for the function key has a pocket for the 2.4 has switches on the back comes with switches and keycaps whereas this one was bare bone this one's a quarter of the price this one was i said before and i hate to sound like a broken record we are going to continue to see better and better boards come out at an affordable price point i've got to say that this is i mean it's getting harder and harder to keep track of which one is the best when it used to be all right, this one's the best. The rest of them, it's like, okay, which one's the worst? Just last year. And going two or three years back, going to 2019, 2020, forget about it. You wouldn't even be able to get a 60% plastic <laughs> for $99, you know, fully loaded with keycaps and switches. You were looking at north of $100. So the market has completely changed. Um, 
I like how it fades. Now there is some light bleed up on the top, but I'm sure that when I open it up, we'll figure out some way to get rid of that light bleed. There's no light bleed from the lights though. Usually that's where the light bleed is, but this is not that big of an issue. I, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm trying to come up so that I can be as unbiased as possible. I'm trying to come up with something I don't like about the keyboard on. I'm losing that battle because I love the navigation cluster. I actually have a couple that only have the four up here, like the icky style. But I always feel like, man, there could be a couple more keys. There's just the space there with the badge. Why didn't they put keys there? This is much better. This gives me enough. I mean, this is almost a TKL. I cannot, I cannot find issue with this keyboard. All right, so I had a chance to take a look at the software. It's actually fairly complete. It has, um, it actually allows you to do function one and function two, although this is a program to menu. And you can also do tap. You can control debounce. Uh, you can edit macros per key RGB. So it's fairly a complete software suite. Um, I mean, it's no QMK via, but the fact that it has tap, I think is huge, especially for a lot of people because they prefer to do it that way. Um, I've got to say, uh, it, it, the only thing, and I mean, it's minor. It, it takes a few more, like two or three seconds. For it to connect once it's paired through bluetooth but once it's connected it's good to go so the 2.4 it's immediate it's it's basically like a lot of the 2.4s i've been seeing lately it's an immediate um connection uh the bluetooth over five i didn't try over three um it took probably about 10 seconds to pair which is a little bit longer but once it was paired it was fine i turned it on and it take, took about three to five seconds to connect and be ready to go. Whereas some other ones that I've been dealing with with 5.0, it's almost instant or a second. So, but that I think is very minor. Um, though I did not see any functionality to control sleep. Um, I think it has a five minute sleep, but that's just me guessing from having it on before it was connected. Now that it's connected, I don't know what the uh, timeout is, but I'll try to see if I can get it in there and add it to the technical section. So for the price, and I think I should be able to get a 10% coupon. Okay, see, there it went to sleep. So that was about a minute. Oh, wow. But as soon as I press this, it activated. So I don't think it's going into a deep sleep. I think it's just... it just might be turning off the lights to save battery so that's pretty good i've had some keyboards to it does like five minutes default or however long it has before it goes to sleep and then it can take a whole 15 20 seconds before it wakes back up and connects and is ready to use again which can be pain in the butt especially if you're like doing one thing coming back and then you know you don't want to sit there and just be like just the specs today we're taking a look at the warmier sk71 it is a three-mode, 68% pre-built that is fully aluminum with side RGBs. It comes pre-loaded with Otemu lubed white switches, which are linear, as well as a set of cherry double-shot PVT keycaps in the colorway matching the colorway of the keyboard, which is available in five different colorways, metallic red, black, purple, silver, and powder blue as you see here it comes with a leaf spring gasket mount pc plate and a south facing pcb with three and five pin hot swap compatibility it is preloaded with a 4600 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in fully loaded at 1274 grams the chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters while the back sits at 32 millimeters providing for a typing angle of seven degrees. Well, I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it, the in-stock keyboard game is changing, and it's only getting better for us, the consumers. Um, I am, honestly, I'm, I wouldn't, 
I knew that things were going to get better this year, but they've definitely they've outperformed my expectations. And Warmier is continually putting out really great products. I love their XVX keycaps. Their keyboards just continue to get better. Um, the last three have literally just gotten better each one that I've gone through um, one is the M87 Pro which has a screen that has a customizable screen and a knob uh, it's a TKL but it's scooted down so you can put the screen there and then there was the other one I can't remember the name of it but it had the ability for both gasket mount and top mount. I mean and it was like it's like $69 I mean a in stock pre-built with more than one mounting option that you can choose from i mean that's just <laughs> that's great anyway i want to uh thank uh xvx warmier for sending out i hope that i'm saying their name right warmier warmier i don't know i'm i'm doing my best here i want to thank warmier for sending me out uh this keyboard to take a look at it is a pleasure i am definitely going to come back to this Despite it sounding very good stock, I am confident I could bring this to a whole nother level with just a slight amount of modifications. So I will be coming back to this soon and I will be modding it. But I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the SK71 from Warmier. I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, links down below to the keyboard as well as the software that can be found on the keyboard um, page. Um, but I got to say, I mean, if you're looking for a 65%, heck, even a TKL, if, I mean, if you don't mind using function, you know, one, plus you could actually just do a double tap. You can set up tap to where, you know, if you press and hold, it's one, if you tap it or double tap, I didn't try the tap. I think it should be just a single tap, but it could be a double tap, but you could change the tap so that it changes to function keys. So plus, I mean, it's wireless it's three mode and it has a pocket for the com i mean i just i can't i don't know how it's just funny that i've seen plastic keyboards even recently that have a 2.4 dongle but don't have a 2.4 pocket and they're plastic like there's just no excuse not to put a pocket for it um i can't wait to open this up I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I am going to um, put it in my rotation for daily driver and have some fun with it. But right now, I'm just going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Warmier SK71. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have got any thoughts or any questions about it or anything that you'd like to see me do when I open it up or mod it, please let me know down in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.